Hey, this is a mini episode of The Poison Lab with the quick hit highlights of bupropion's toxicity and managing it in overdose. This is one of many mini episodes we're releasing alongside the main episode, so make sure you check out the others, like predicting late seizures in bupropion with Dr. Ari Phillip, or the effects of bupropion on the cardiac gap junction with Dr. Travis Olives. Or just check out the main episode. But if you're in a hurry, here are the main takeaways about bupropion in today's day and age. Bupropion is a prescription drug that is gaining widespread prevalence throughout the United States, and thus the incidence of overdose is also increasing. And unfortunately, bupropion overdoses tend to have more severe outcomes than other classes of antidepressants. The America's Poison Center's annual report for 2021 compared bupropion to all other antidepressants compared to whole classes of SSRIs, SNRIs, lithium, TCAs, bupropion, as its own class, is the most common cause of a serious or life-threatening effect in overdose. Which means if you are treating a patient in a hospital with a serious problem occurring from an antidepressant, it's most likely going to be bupropion. Bupropion itself is an amino ketone stimulant in the class of substances called cathinones, the same substances that the cot plant and bath salt stimulants reside in. When taken in overdose, bupropion leads to a sympathomimetic toxidrome, which can manifest as agitation, restlessness, tachycardia, and in severe cases, seizures and cardiovascular collapse from both arrhythmia and cardiogenic shock. Complicating the management of bupropion is the fact that the multiple extended and sustained release products can cause delayed effects. Bupropion is a toxic time bomb, where you might appear initially stable, but then decompensate up to 24 hours later. And it's not uncommon for seizures to occur after 8 or even 12 hours, depending on whether a sustained release or extended release product was ingested. It's very difficult to predict who will experience these severe delayed effects. A number of studies support that Patients with tachycardia are far more likely to have seizures. Patients with neuropsychiatric symptoms like tremor or agitation are in the high-risk group as well. So your tachycardic anxious bupropion overdose should not have their symptoms dismissed or be sent home since they are still at high risk of seizing. And while the absence of tachycardia has a decent negative predictive value for patients not developing seizures, tachycardia can be masked by co-ingestions like alpha-2 agonists. So you really can't hedge too many of your bets on it. You should consult with a poison center or toxicologist to determine an appropriate observation time for a patient to rule out the potential for serious delayed symptoms. Other clinical conundrums that occur in managing bupropion are the fact that its cardiotoxicity is somewhat unique in that it can block gap junctions and doesn't necessarily affect sodium channels. Blocking gap junctions leads to disordered depolarization, which looks like a wide complex QRS on an EKG, but it's not your typical tox wide QRS, which is from sodium channel blockade. You should still give sodium bicarbonate or other hypertonic sodium to try to narrow the QRS, but we have to be prepared for it to be refractory, and patients in malignant unbreakable arrhythmias may require things like ECMO. Unfortunately, refractory arrhythmia is not the only problem. We can also see refractory cardiogenic shock, potentially from bupropion's effects on the gap junction. Cardiogenic shock can be managed with standard vasopressors and inotropes, but mechanical circulatory support may be needed. If you have a patient who's showing life-threatening signs of toxicity, is peri-arrest, or maybe in a refractory arrhythmia, IV fat emulsion has been used in a number of case reports. And it may help or at least be a bridge to more definitive therapies like ECMO. If you have a decompensating patient, you may want to have the conversation with your ECMO team earlier than later as to whether or not the patient would be a good candidate. Or start looking for ECMO-capable centers to transfer the patient to so this therapy would be available to them if they need it. Finally, in patients who are adequately supported for airway, breathing, and circulation with all the definitive supportive cares but are not showing any neurologic activity and there's concern for brain death, we need to recognize that there are a number of cases from bupropion overdose with patients who have absent brain death reflexes and EEGs that show burst suppression that later go on to wake up and have full neurologic recovery. It appears bupropion can be a brain death mimic, highlighting the importance of trying to get analytical confirmation that the drug is no longer present in the patient's system before brain death reflex testing is performed. 
More about that can be found in the 2017 ACMT Guidance and Position Statement for Brain Death Testing in Patients with Drug Overdose. Lastly, due to the possibility of severe and difficult-to-manage consequences from overdose, some toxicologists are very aggressive with their gastric decontamination. There might be a role for whole bowel irrigation as well as activated charcoal, even later than normal poisonings, due to the fact that many products are extended release. Just another reason why you should contact a toxicologist early. In fact, due to the many nuances in managing this overdose, a toxicologist really should be consulted as soon as you have identified bupropion as your substance. They can be reached 24-7 at 1-800-222-1222 if you don't have your own inpatient toxicology consult service. That's the end of this mini-episode. Don't forget to check out all of the other mini-episodes we released alongside this and a few more that will be coming out after the show has been released, as well as the main episode. You can follow the show on Twitter at Lab Poison, myself at EM Poison for MD. Our Instagram is talks underscore talk. You can email us anytime you want at talkstalk1 at gmail.com. And I think we have a Facebook, The Poison Lab, as well as a website, www.thepoisonlab.com, for free medical games, resources, and many, many more episodes of The Poison Lab with free toxicology education to help you care for your poison patients better. Hope you can tune in next time. Hey, Toxo, can you play us out? The information on this show is for educational purposes only and should not be interpreted as medical advice or treatment recommendations. Contact your doctor for health questions or call your local poison center at 1-800-222-1222. The opinions expressed on this show do not represent those of our employers. This show is poorly written and shoddily produced by Ryan Feldman. Don't forget to give it a share with your nerdy friends. Cheerio, mates. See you next time.